Brian Mason. And in today's Bible study, the title is Besought Him with Tears. Esther, the queen, had acted as an intercessor. She had come before King Ahurus, her husband, and she had named in the presence of Haman, the one who had determined to put to death every Jew throughout the kingdom. And Haman was named, and Haman was put to death. Yes, he was determined that he would destroy the Jews. And in the end, it all came and fell back upon himself. That's what God will do. Even in our days, that those who seek to come against the, the purposes of God, ultimately will fall, will perish. Not a very popular message, but God is God. He is the Almighty God. And he who knows the end from the beginning will fulfill his own plan, his own purpose for his own glory. Let us continue in Esther chapter 8. And from the third verse. And Esther spake again before the king and fell down at his feet and besought him with tears. Now why was she seeking him with tears? Because although Haman had been put to death, that what Haman had purpose still stood because there had been a decree which was sealed by the king's seal. That decree stood. Then the Jews would be put to death. That decree had to be revoked. And only the authority of the king could revoke it. Yes, the mischief, as it says, of Haman, that had been dealt with. And that which he had devised against the Jews still had to be dealt with. And the king, although Esther, being his wife, oh, it seems so strange that uh, she had to come and be accepted, just like any other one who came into the presence of the king, that the king would hold out the scepter and she would touch it. And Ezra said, if it please the king, yes, the king be their husband, and if I have found favor in his sight. And the thing seem bright before the king. And I be pleasing in his eyes. Yes, it's, it's quite, quite some, uh, something this uh, between man and wife. Let it be written to reverse. Because she knew that those letters as they stood would be honored they would come to pass. And everything that was being set in motion would still go ahead unless the king intervened. Because the letters had gone out, yes, sent by Haman. No doubt dictated by Haman. But the all-important th thing that mattered, they had the king's seal upon them for the ring which the king had given to Haman. And 
when Haman had lost his position, the ring was taken from him and given to Mordecai. And there was Esther. Oh, she opened her heart to her husband, the king. And the tears, yes, the tears were there. She was pleading with her husband of her people. Her people meant everything to her. And it's the same in these days too. That where there is anyone, anywhere, for suffering for the Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, wherever they be, to stand with them, however we can. And it's prayer, because there is so few I actually know by name. But yet, in the many reports that are received, to stand with them in prayer day by day. And though though may not be outwardly weeping, there's that inward weeping of knowing that there are those who are fully identified with the Lord Jesus Christ and his cross and that they're being poured out as living sacrifices for him as he lives his life through them. Now Esther in the Old Testament days she was greatly touched. Yes, she didn't know anything of Jesus. She didn't know anything of the cross. But she knew about her own people. And she couldn't bear to even think about it being fulfilled that they would all be put to death. That's why she poured out her heart. Her tears were there to her husband, the king. And she got a response from her husband, the king. He said unto us for the queen and to Mordecai. So it looks like Mordecai was there with her. The Jew, behold, I have given Esther the house of Haman, and him they have hanged upon the gallows, because he had laid his hand upon the Jews. Yes, that was a fact. That had been completed. And the instruction was now to Mordecai, the one who had taken the place of Haman, to write, because it had to be written, and to go out, as it were, from the king, write in the king's name, and seal it with the king's ring. For the writing which is written in the king's name and sealed with the king's ring, may no man reverse. A finality there, that once the king had acted, and only the king, or the seal of the king's ring, would be able to reverse what had been decided. So 
Oh, there was Mordecai. Yes, he knew what had to be done, he knew what had to be written, and he acted upon it. And the king's scribes were called. And it was the third month. Yes, it was the first month when the first decree, decree went out. And it was written according to all that Mordecai commanded unto the Jews and to the lieutenants and the deputies and the rulers of the provinces which are from India unto Ethiopia and 127 provinces unto every province according to the writing thereof and unto every people after their language, and to the Jews according to their writing and according to their language. So everyone, throughout all this vast, vast kingdom, 127 provinces, it would take quite some while for, for the scribes, a number of, however number of scribes, it would take a while for them to handwrite all of this and the, all, all the different languages that it had to go out in and that all the people would be able to, to know what was going on, what, what had been decided, what the king had sent out as a commandment and that commandment would have to be obeyed. And he wrought in the king Ahurus's name and sealed it with the king's ring and sent letters by post on horseback and riders on mules, camels and young dromedaries. Oh, that must have been quite some sight, all these various means of, of sending out these letters, all there to be hand-delivered. wherein the king granted the Jews, which were in every city, to gather themselves together and to stand for their life, to destroy, to slay, and to cause to perish all the power of the people and province that would assault them, both little ones and women, and to take the spoil of them for a prey. Yes, the Jews were going to be able to stand for themselves. They were going to be able to overcome their enemies, because undoubtedly this shows that Haman was not the only one who, who was the enemy, that there were many throughout the kingdom who did not like the Jews and wanted to see the back of them. On one day, in all the provinces of King Ahurus, namely, upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month Ada, that was the, the day and the month which Haman's original decree had stated that they were to be put to death. And the copy of the writing of, for a commandment to be given in every province was published unto all people and that the Jews should be ready against that day not just to, as it were, be saved from death but to avenge themselves on their enemies that's God reversing that which the enemies of God had determined to do. So the posts that rode upon mules and camels went out, being hastened and pressed on by the king's commandments, and the decree was given at Shushan the palace. Yes, that's the first place that w for the decree to be made known, the new decree. And Mordecai went out from the presence of the king 
in royal apparel of blue and white, and with a great crown of gold, and with a garment of fine linen, linen and purple, and the city of Shushan rejoiced and was glad. Yes, gladness, rejoicing, because God was at work, and God was doing that which was, bring, was bringing glory to himself. The Jews had light and gladness and joy and honor, and in every province and in every city, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a good day. And many of the people of the land became Jews, for the fear of the Jews fell upon them. That's quite remarkable, you might say. But what was being seen, that there was something in these people which was different. And because of this, others who knew not God, who knew not the God of the Jews, were drawn, were attracted to, and they wanted. Because what did they want? They saw a life, a life which, which spoke to them, a life which they wanted. And they became Jews. And as Christians in these days, what speaks to others, not so much words, but a life. And a life not of ourselves, but a life of the one who lives within us the Lord Jesus Christ himself, Yeshua. That's the reality that's going to speak in these days to draw from all, all nations, all people groups, ones who still to come into the kingdom of God It's the reality of God's life within those who God comes to live. And it's coming to live by way of the cross. The way of faith in Jesus Christ but the way of faith in Jesus Christ and the all-important word after it, alone. Nothing else added to it. Nothing else can detract from it. That his death at Calvary's cross was the only way to reconcile sinners with God himself through the blood not the blood of animals but the blood of the Son of God now in the twelfth month that is the month Adar and on the thirteenth day of the same when the king's commandment and his decree drew near to be put to in, in execution in that day that the enemies of the Jews hoped to have power over them. Yes, oh, the evil one, he wants power. He's drunk on power. That he turned against them, 
those who came against the Jews. The Jews gathered themselves together in their cities throughout all the provinces. Yes, they turned up on the right day at the right time. And they were ready for these, these who were thought that they were going to be able to put them to death. And no man could withstand the Jews. And no man will withstand those in these days who are filled with what? Filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Because the power of the Holy Spirit is God himself in dwelling human flesh. Just as he did in his son Jesus Christ when he was on earth. So he lives in those who are his. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. That's what God is looking for in these days, those who will be living sacrifices, filled with himself, filled with the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because no one will withstand the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is dead, is divine. No matter what the evil one may do, try to do in these days, he is a defeated foe. He is a defeated enemy of God. And all the powers of hell, every demonic spirit, is absolutely nothing. When? They come against the Holy Spirit. No wonder. I quote often Rhys Howells. When he said, Now I know you have been brought to naught at Calvary. That was his word to the very devil. When he knew that the atoning blood of Jesus had destroyed the works of the evil one. And that's what happened here. For throughout the province, this Mordecai, the one who taken over from Haman, he waxed greater and greater. Thus the Jews smote all their enemies with the stroke of the sword and slaughter and destruction and did what they would unto those that hated them. And in Shushan the palace, the Jews slew and destroyed 500 men. Yes, there had been a role reversal. The intention was to be slaughter of the Jews. But it was the other way round. Ones were being converted to become Jews. And those who were the enemies of the Jews. They were falling before the Jews. God will not be mocked. He cannot be mocked. Because he knows the end from the beginning. He is still working out his own purpose. And everything that still has to take place is centered in his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's centered upon the cross. 
Now the cross where Jesus is still nailed to it. Because that will be defeat. With an empty cross. Because the blood has been offered. The blood of Jesus Christ has been accepted. And he is now at, in the very presence of the Father. At his right hand with what all authority in heaven and upon earth. And ultimately... According to this word of God, no matter what may come and seek to come against God's people and against God's purposes, the final say is in the one who has been given all authority in heaven and upon earth, and that every knee shall bow. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He is to be given the preeminence. He is the exalted Christ. He is Yeshua. Father, our hearts rejoice in thy beloved Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And that all that has been done through him at Calvary, that his blood has been offered once for all, and that the whosoever will come will come, and that daily, in the midst of all the darkness in this world, in the midst of all that will seek to come and try to hinder and interfere with thy purpose of the gospel to go into every creature and the gathering of the Jews that Jew and Gentile shall be one in Christ Jesus that the blood has been offered the blood of thy son has been accepted and that it is through faith alone in him that all who are still to come to thyself will come for this is offered through the name which is higher than all other names, that of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that you shall be glorified through the Son. Amen.